myself as well as most people that I know that, that do this sort of thing, it starts with the costume. It starts by going, and the same for me, it started by going to comic conventions. San Diego Comic Con was my first. Um, I go to as many conventions in Southern California as I can possibly attend. And then after going a couple years, I started costuming. And the more I costumed, the more I enjoyed it. And then you just, because there's so many conventions in Southern California, you end up seeing the same people and staying in touch on social media. And then some people eventually asked me if I wanted to do charitable work, and of course I wanted to, and it's, it's the most rewarding costuming that I do, this charity. We do all kinds of charity events, hospital visits, fundraisers, any place where they need costumers. Um, you do have to have a Marvel costume to enter, but a lot of our events, we, we bring Marvel, DC, Star Wars characters, Disney princesses, all that stuff. The better we cope, um, the better we heal, and the more joy we bring into our life, it's going to increase that healing, which is exactly what Avengers Initiative does for our, our pediatric patients and their families. They bring an additional joy to just kind of support and enhance that coping. The hospitals themselves are so strict in bringing on people into visiting patients that when I heard somebody, you know, interested in coming to see the patients, I was really taken back because I wasn't sure what to expect. And um, once we, once they came to the hospital, it was like, you know, like a one, like a, I don't know, 180. I don't know. It was just so nice to see what they did for our patients. Afterwards, a lot of times we'll get together for dinner. We'll, we're covered in sweat. We're dirty. We're hungry. Uh, we'll take off our costumes. We'll go somewhere close by to eat. And we stopped at a burger shop. And we were just talking about how great it went and how we did. And there just happened to be a woman at the next table that works at the hospital we just came from. She had just gotten off and she was having dinner. And she chimed in and said, you know, I want to thank you for what you did today because she said, these kids, even though you spend five or ten minutes with each, with each one, they, they talk about it for weeks. This really affects them. So there's something about seeing those faces, the kids, just embracing that uh, interaction and bringing something to them that they might not normally be able to have. So it, it's very valuable for me personally, and I think for most people that do it. It's the joy that you guys bring, the smiles that you bring, not only to the patients and then to the children, but when parents see their child be normal again, be themselves. It's uplifting for those for those parents who feel like they can't bring any normalcy to this life. But it's the first time where a child can say, hey, they're here for me. There's even studies that just a superhero stance, it brings self-confidence and a sense of power to children. So just kind of bringing that to the environment and having children stand in that superhero stance can actually make them feel stronger and like a hero. It gives you a sense of there being more beyond your daily little trivial problems that you might have, and it kind of gives you a, a renewed sense of reality. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer, and I fix lab equipment. Pretty boring stuff. And I, I don't get to dress like this either. There are many great volunteer groups, but if you want more information on West Coast Avengers, log on to AvengersHQ.com. So my team and I recently did a visit for Children's Hospital of Orange County, both for inpatient kids who are being treated along with an outpatient event. And, you know, these kids are going through a very difficult time. They got to dress up as Captain America. You know, I'm busy watching my team and stuff like that, and I'll stick pictures with people um, a few times, uh, which just hit me. You know, a kid just runs up to me below my knee. I didn't see him. They gave me a hug. You know, they just wrap their arms around my leg and, you know, they're, they're just genuinely happy to see me. I just reminded, um, you know, this is a chance for these kids to experience something very joyful in their lives. My first experience was amazing. I actually wasn't a member for my first experience, but I was recruited to be uh, Tony for a toy drive that we were doing. So I had never been to one of these before, but seeing the kids and reacting with them and the hospital staff was amazing it it really it really beyond words um, especially because they're going through so much and uh, if we can give them a little bit of a break just from real life stuff like that means the world I remember that when I was a kid it was just magical I would be on air for months and so I hope these kids maybe feel the same way but yeah with Marvel having been so inclusive with their lineup of superheroes, every child can 
see themselves in a superhero regardless of race or gender or ethnicity. So it's, it's always been such a great experience seeing them see themselves in you and just, oh my god, like, that spider, a spider girl. I, I can be a spider girl, and then they, you know, I, I'll sometimes see them, you know, run around. Get, we love to love to get them to do the little poses with us, um, and that's just so much fun. Everybody has time if they really make it a priority. You know, you have time to watch TV. You have time to go to the movie. Everybody at least has an hour or two that they can give back. If everybody gave back a, just a little bit the world will be just that much better. Greetings, my name is Mark Chulen. I'm serving as uh, the moderator for this uh, pediatric service discussion called uh, uh, Cosplay in Service to Others. I happen to serve as um, the Avengers Initiative president. I'm also the event coordinator for our group, uh, whether it be pediatric service events or whether it be a media community event. I help plan those for the community, um, uh, along with serving as a leader, chapter leader for uh, California. I try to work with folks to set stuff up. Along with being part of the Avengers Initiative, I'm also a part of the Imperial cosplay group, Star Wars group called the 501st Legion. I'm also a member of the uh, sister hero group called the Rebel Legion. I also belong to a GI Joe group called the Finest. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce the rest of our speakers. Uh, Amber, let me uh, turn it over to you, please. My name is Amber Chavez and I am the special programs coordinator for the Child Life Department at Chalk Children's. Luke, sir, let me go with you next, please. Yeah, hi, my name is Luke Brand. I'm the media programs coordinator for the Seacrest Studios, also at Talk Children's. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony, sir, let's go with you next. Hey, sure, my name is Tony Wells. I'm a member of the Avengers Initiative. I do Spider-Man, and I'm also a pediatrician up in Northern California. Thank you very not much. Terrence. Hi, my name is Terrence Thompson. I am a member of the Avengers Initiative West Coast Avengers as well. I work as a scrub nurse in the San Diego County. Thank you very much. Hana. Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, I am an EMT, and, and, uh, which is an emergency medical technician. Um, I have been a part of Avengers Initiative for about five years now, and I cosplay, my Marvel cosplays are Deadpool and Groot. Thank you very much. <coughs> Amber, let's go back to you, if we may. Could you explain to our audience what is Chalk Children's? So Chalk Children's is an all, um, it's a hospital for just um, children ages newborn to 26 years of age. We um, treat anything from diagnosis to, from cancer, diabetes, eating disorder, anything like that. Um, and our department is in charge of all the fun things that go on in the hospital. And so our department is the child life department and we are like medical teachers that teach kids what <coughs> it is that they're going through in a way that they can understand. Um, we also use distraction for the kids while they go through surgery. We prepare them, um, the patient and the family. So we're there with them throughout their whole journey um, while they're there in the hospital. Thank you much, very much for sharing that. Uh, Luke, could you please share um, what you do at Chalk, and particularly during these perilous times when we're in a, in a climate of social distancing, uh, what you're doing is why it's so key, please. Yeah, um, so I have the honor of working with Amber and alongside a bunch of our other specialists in the child life department. Um, but my job specifically is within the Seacrest Studios, which is an internal radio and TV broadcast station for all the kids. So as soon as they get in the room, they turn on their TV and they watch the channel that I broadcast on. And so it's my job to come up with creative, unique, and fun content to take their minds off why they're there in the first place um, and provide some source of joy. And that's been especially important during this quarantine time. Um, just I'm sure as you can imagine, before this, we were able to go into our patients' rooms and 
just hang out with them one on one and without masks on and be right next to them next in their bed. Um, now we can't do that. We have to be socially distanced. We have to be wearing masks, and that's it was a bit of a shock for the patients at first. So it's been my job and also Amber's job to figure out ways that we can connect with them um, in a way that's kind of resembles what it was like before. Um, so it's been a challenge, but it's been uh, intriguing to see what we can come up with because we've actually been able to have some creative stuff come out of it so far. Thank you. So um, you were kind enough to take some of our content from Corona Story Time, where we had people dress up and um, read some childhood stories for kids to look at online. Um, how has technology been helpful from such volunteers in such a very an awkward situation where I think you and Amber have shared, like even you guys yourselves, you guys kind of have to keep your distance and be healthful and mindful when you're in, uh, around your uh, medical facility around patients. Yeah. Um, so like, like I was saying before quarantine, we would have our superhero friends come in and visit the kids. And it was the greatest thing because the patient would see their favorite superhero or someone they knew from a movie they loved uh, right next to them. And in costume, it was, it's the real deal, right? And so now we've been airing these videos of these same superheroes reading them a book they might know or something along those lines in the voice of that character acting like that, exactly like that character. And it's um, been so awesome to see how that impact ha has been able to reach that patient through the virtual perspective, um, which is not something I don't, I think we really considered before until we kind of had to with quarantine. Um, so it's been great to see because the kid can watch Spider-Man reading them, you know, a children's book like Charlotte's Web, right? How fun is that? And they get to see their favorite superhero reading a story that they love in that voice as that character. And it really has made a difference from what I can tell. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, Terrence, sir, um, you were kind enough to participate in that Corona story time. You've read a couple stories, both as Spider-Man as Captain America. Um, what was your impression, I guess, both as a first responder, but also now as a participant? Uh, what has your been thoughts about participating in such efforts and also, to be honest, dealing with such stuff? Well, Mark, I am extremely honored to have been a part of it. Um, and it, it, it's a funny thing because I didn't, didn't ever imagine doing something like that, you know, until the whole COVID thing happened. Um, but I'm glad I was able to reach children in some shape or form. It was a little bit uh, daunting because I was like, well, I'm going to sit here in front of this camera and uh, read this book and try to focus on what I'm conveying to the child or whoever's going to watch it <laughs> and, and, and care as much as possible. Uh, it was a good time, though. I have to say that. Okay. Well, thank you. So we've been in quarantine for a couple months, but when we have done visits, um, what, to be honest, do you miss? And what do you look forward to hopefully when it is a safer time when we can do such activities? I love to see the, the, ch the children's reactions to us when we're there in character and the, the joy on their faces. Um, as I mentioned before about the whole in front of the camera thing, it was a little awkward because there's not really someone there and you kind of have to focus a little bit differently but when the child is right there you can see the reaction and you can it's i guess like i would say it's immediate gratification because you're like you know that they're enjoying you or whatnot and you can kind of gauge their behavior on what you should or should not do or you know how you should approach them um it was very different but uh i look forward definitely look forward to being able to visit children again in person i can't wait actually <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Hana, I'd like to uh, turn to you for a second. So you have your family and you have an interesting background with chalk. I guess, could you share for our audience how you guys are involved with chalk and to be honest, how you get involved with pediatric service plays? Yeah, of course. Um, so we've actually been involved for chalk with, for like a number of years now because my mom has um, hemophilia A and she has platelet dysfunction. And that's a really rare bleeding disorder, especially amongst women. Not a lot of women have it. So Chalk was um, one of the only places that we could go to get my mom treatment and get her help. 
and they were able to run all the tests for her and able to help her out like as much as they could and we wanted a sense to give back to chalk because chalk had done so much for us so we wanted to um we actually met with um, a phlebotomist there his name is Jaime um he actually told us uh why don't you guys come for Dia de los Niños and you come and come in your costumes because he knew we liked to do elaborate cosplays so he told us hey why don't you come to um Dia de los Niños and come show kids like what you guys are about and I know, like, the first time, like, I ever went to go see kids at the hospital, it, like, really, like, brightened my day, and it really helped me to, like, know that I could bring joy to sick kids, and it's humbling to know that they think that we're, we are the heroes, when in reality, they are, because they're going through so much in life, so, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. So, um, you've brought us in, we've done now a few visits and stuff like that. Um, you know, your family's gotten involved in bringing others like our, our group in. What's your kind of thought now that you've included others in this effort? It's awesome to know that we were able to coordinate to bring um, Avengers Initiative into all of this because at first it was just Iron Man, Black Widow, and Thor, which was me, my brother, and my mom. And now that it's such on a bigger scale, we have Star Wars characters, we have Marvel characters, we have everything we need to like go and show the kids. We have a bigger variety of characters that they love. So that's really cool that we have different characters to bring to them now. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Tony, sir. So you are a medical professional <coughs> that particularly deals with children, uh, but whether it be Marvel or other stuff like Star Wars, you get to dress up in front of an audience. Um, what was your kind of first thought going into this and how do you feel about now kind of doing two areas, both service for both professionally, but also service also as a volunteer, sir? Well, um, volunteering in this manner was not on my radar. Um, I knew I was going to do some type of service to children um, once I got my career established and whether or not that was going to be through uh, returning back to the Boys and Girls Club, which where I grew up in or doing um, Big Brother, I, uh, I was going to do something. Um, and it wasn't until I went to a panel kind of like this, um, where um, that was run by the fellow first, actually, I, did I finally start to consider, well, maybe that might be something interesting to do. And actually, I was kind of helping out another friend to to get started because he wasn't going to do it um, unless there was someone else to help. Um, and the bug just kind of hit. <laughs> so, um, and my, I always wanted to feel like I was a community pediatrician, that I wasn't just um, the doctor that was a part of a large medical group, but that I was seen as a leader and an and a activist within my own community. Um, and still supporting children in other ways. And this was just another way to be able to do it. Um, I think the interesting thing <clears throat> going into the hospital setting was learning how to separate my doctor self from my costuming self. Because um, a switch kind of turns on right when you go into a, a medical setting that you, you kind of feel like you're expected to do something. Um, and you kind of fall into what you normally would do, which is, What's the diagnosis? How do you treat it? What, what needs to be done for the child? But in terms of being in costume, what you do for the child is vastly different. Um, and you can put aside all of those um, routine things, um, the technical stuff, and really focus on um, bringing joy to the kid in that moment um, and bringing joy to the rest of the family in that moment, um, which was very liberating and, and, and to, an, to an extent. Well, thank you for sharing that. We definitely appreciate your personal and your professional insight. Uh, Amber, I'd like to turn back to you, if I would, please. So mm -hmm. when you heard, um, when you saw us for the first time, uh, what did you expect? And now that we visited a few times, I guess, how would it be yourself, uh, the, the kids or the parents, what do they think? So the first time I remember when someone reached out to me, I think it was like through the 501st, um, said that they wanted to come and visit the kids in the hospital. And I was like, what? Like, they're, they're not legit. Like, they just said they're costumed, you know, they're fans. 
And so I'm like, I don't understand this. And so um, the first time I met, um, I think it was Robin and Jason, who are part of the 501st um, Legion, came. And um, I thought it was the neatest thing, like instantly, as soon as I saw them um, dressed up, they brought um, Darth Vader and the stormtroopers. And the whole hospital, I'm not, I'm not kidding, like through, I want to say two-year-olds, the medical staff, like our volunteers, even like our department, we all, when they were walking through the halls, everyone was stopping to take pictures with them. And since then, I have to like put a restriction on our staff to stop taking photos with the 501st because whenever they're there, they're like celebrities. I think they're even more popular than some of the people that come through. Um, they've just, the kids just um, gravitate towards them. Like Luke had mentioned, you know, they see these movies, they, they see them and they just connect with them instantly. And it's just something so different than having, I don't know, like a celebrity come and visit. Th these people are like taking the time out of their day to come in and visit and just brighten up their day. And it just, it means a world to all of us. And so since then I've been, I've become a huge fan. I love it when they come. I love when um, the Avengers initiative comes as well, the Rebel Legion. Um, and so the whole hospital has now gotten used to like what um, each group is and what um, kind of characters are in each group. So when I mentioned the Rebel Legion, they know it's the good guys and some are not that fan. They like the bad ones, <laughs> I want to say. Um, so, um, but it's interesting to see it just, yeah, it makes us all happy. So. Well, thank you. So I want to touch on two things that you mentioned. Uh, so one thing, um, whether it be the 501st or us and the Avengers Initiative or the Rebel Legion or the Droid Builders, uh, we're mm -hmm. thankful and grateful that you trust us and the fan community to participate. Um, so people know, what are, what does a hospital, rightfully so, understandably expect of volunteers when you want to help out at a, at a medical facility? What are people, what are some of the things people should keep in mind when they want to volunteer and stuff like that? Yeah, through organizations, you know, like the Avengers um, or the 501st, I think we just expect that these people are held um, in the same kind of standards that us as professionals that work there are held. So, you know, we we want to make sure that they're in their character mode, that they're not kind of out of character, because then it just kind of ruins it for like the younger ones, especially, um, that they keep, um, I think, yeah, just like our rules and regulations like no taking pictures and um they're of a certain age i think we have an age restriction of 18 i'm not sure about the about your groups you know if there's any age restrictions but in the hospital we can only have um 18 and over so our volunteers can come in that's important to keep in mind but really it's just to keep in character i think that's like one of the biggest things um when you're around kids not to ruin like that surprise especially like I've seen like the R2D2, like I think it's Victor um, keeps his like, he doesn't have his remote out. He always keeps it in his backpack away hidden. So all the kids are like, you know, when they see the R2D2 coming through the hallways, um, you know, it's like that surprise and the kids are like, that's not real. And I'm like, yes, it is. Like, it's a real, it's the real robot. And they're like, what? And so it just kind of keeps like the magic of, you know, the childhood, just keep it intact while they're in the hospital, so. Very good. Uh, so one thing I wanna thank you for, definitely would like your you know, reflection on. So a couple of years ago, I think we had a certain guest from Mythbusters who wanted to visit. So I thank you for granting us that visit. Who wanted to learn about that, uh, what's involved with pediatric service. So, so Mr. Grant E. Mahamer from Mythbusters, he wanted to check out what was involved. Um, do you recall that time we did a quick Halloween visit and stuff like that? I think back uh, in the fall. Oh my gosh, was it just this past fall? No, so it wasn't 2019, I think it was 2018. Oh. It, was, it was like for a quick visit, like in October, November. Oh my goodness. I, okay. I think we did 2019 too. But no, this is uh, a great, we, no, we did do 2019. We did Halloween, but yeah. this was like a quick visit. Um, back in the day uh but i just want to definitely thank you amber just because like uh mr Eva Har grant wants to uh, definitely bring he's interested in doing service just like uh, victor was um yeah. 
he is, uh, so I'll have to share it with you, he's working on an animatronic uh, child, the child from the Mandalorian or the Baby Yoda and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to de debut earlier this spring, but obviously with what's been going on health-wise, it just wasn't to be. Uh, but uh, definitely I know his impression of Chalk and just what you all do. And he was kind of uh, taken about, you know, he was very grateful that people actually recognized him and stuff like that. Um, he just appreciated what you all do for the kids and what they're going through in the families and stuff like that. So uh, we appreciate, we were given the chance to educate someone who's interested in doing service, so. That's great, thank you. <clears throat> uh, so Luke, um, for your efforts in sharing content and stuff like that, um, how do people get connected or what are the kind of things we can do to help out families and patients going through these difficult times, whether it be chalk or other facilities? Um, definitely, I know people want to help out, but what are the, some of the ways we can use technology to reach out and be of comfort, comfort to others, sir? Yeah, I mean, as we've kind of been saying, this is new territory for everyone because this has never happened before. So I'm still looking for ways to reach our audience and our patients as Amber is, as all you guys are. So if I, I always say, if anyone has any ideas, like, let us know because we don't have all the answers to what our kids want because this is new territory, right? Um, but what we're trying to do is figure out how we can best connect with our patients virtually and having your guys' characters read those stories has been great so far because as I said last time, seeing that character read that story is just so great for them. And I've seen it because I've showed them the videos and seen their reaction. Um, so I'm currently trying to troubleshoot ways to emulate that in a different way. So a lot of things we do in studio are play lots of uh, games that the kids can participate in from their rooms. And a big one is bingo. So I know we had the idea of potentially having a character um, do a Zoom just like this while we play bingo and they can call out the numbers as that character. Um, and then myself or whoever else is working in studio that day can ask that character questions about where they're from and you know if they speak any different languages or who their friends are from these movies that all the kids know. Um, that's one idea that I've had that I think would be super fun and it would kind of propel everyone involved into that specific film's world. And for that hour we're playing bingo, I think that would be a great idea. Um, so those are the kind of ideas we're looking for is how can we engage with our patients in fun and unique ways that have never been done before because this is a new territory for everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing um, the ways you can hopefully serve. Uh, Hannah, I did turn back to you for a moment. So uh, as you mentioned, you're, uh, you have a parent who went through some uh, very difficult medical stuff and Chuck was kind of able to help out. But uh, could you tell our audience, you know, your, your, one of your, your dad, he's a first responder, you're a first responder. Um, how did you pick up kind of this ethos to serve, whether it be becoming an AI member like your dad or also being a first responder like your father? So I've always idolized my dad in a way. I've always wanted to be just like him because he is a captain with LA County Fire Department. And I'm actually in the process of becoming a firefighter as well. So I've always had this like strive to be just like my dad. So my dad started building costumes in about like 2010 or so. He started building Iron Man suits and I just absolutely adored it. I just, I wanted to be just like him. So I started to build my own suits as well. And he would help me with, with everything that he could. We would use um, Peppacura, which is a common um, foam files website. And we would also use 3D printing to do things. And I just wanted to become just like my dad. So we always would, um, we've always had a sense to give back because that's how my whole life has been. I've always seen my dad in the field going on ride alongs, watching him in the field, watching him help other people and save their lives. And I thought, I always thought to myself, I want to be just like him. So we've always just had this like drive to serve other people and try to make them as happy as we could. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, Terrence, so as you and I have joked, we've uh, known each other for quite some time. Um, not only your time as a surgical nurse, I'd like to also thank you for your time as a, a Navy corpsman. Um, as someone who's also a parent and who's done a lot of service events, um, you know, what are the things you hope to <clears throat> endow in other kids that you 
cosplay around, but even your own kids. Like I've seen on social media, you kind of dress up your kids. What are, what are some lessons, you know, like the, you hope to share with, with them and what you do? Um, well, Mark, I, I've always had a sense of wanting to help, help people in some shape or fashion. I mean, ever since I even knew what it was uh, and to be the best person I could be. I hope that that radiates to all the people that I meet, my children, you know, family members, friends, and uh, that maybe they can take something positive from what I do and what I believe in. My father was, uh, was that for me. And I guess I, uh, it really struck home. I mean, he was, a, he was a very silent man. He didn't speak much but you could just see it and you could just feel it what kind of person he was and i always wanted to be just like him i kind of i guess i'm kind of echoing <laughs> anna right now but i always wanted to be like him and here i am well thank you um he clearly has inspired you in great good ways and you definitely i think you work to inspire others uh, tony um back to your uh so you're already a medical professional helping out kids what inspired you to dress up, whether it be a stormtrooper, Captain America, Spider-Man? Um, what, dare I say, gave you the bug? Um, <laughs> well, I initially did it to get one of my friends to complete a project, because he will not complete a project unless there was someone else to help enable him to do it. And so we basically started with, um, two of our favorite characters. Uh, he liked clone troopers and I liked Darth Maul. And so uh, we're like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this. And uh, we were both in uh, finishing up some of our training at the time and then our paths diverged. And so I was now alone on my end and he was alone on his up on, uh, in a different city now. Um, and um, eventually it was, I was just trying to figure out if I really wanted to do this. Um, Cause it was taking a lot of time. I was stalling on my con on my on my project um it was taking a long time to get the makeup and everything together so i was like well let me go ahead and just get a stormtrooper costume and see if i like it and i had such an amazing time at my first event um and then my second event was exactly the same way and i was surrounded by all these people who yes they liked um being in costume and cosplaying and um but they really were interested in giving back to their communities. Um, and I kind of felt like, as, as they say, I kind of found, found my tribe. Um, the other part of it was that I found that I, I enjoyed building. Um, it was a very therapeutic thing for me to do. Um, when you're, you know, working 10 hour days and you're seeing people sometimes at their worst and you're having to get bad news, um, sometimes it's nice to sit there and go, I need to make that line straight. And I am going to focus on making that line straight. And everything else just melts away in that moment. Um, and then all of a sudden you, you finish up a project and you have something else that you can share with people um, that, uh, that they, they identify with and they have fun with and bring them a lot of joy. Um, and all those uh, experiences just keep on adding up and adding up and adding up and it just keeps you coming back for more. Um, and between all of those different things, yes, the, the bug bit really, really hard. Well, thank you. So I'd like to give uh, each of our speakers a moment to uh, provide some closing remarks. Um, Hannah, I'd like to give uh, you a first crack at that, please. Okay. Um, I also want to echo off what Tony was saying, how therapeutic cosplaying is and how it like really takes you away from everything going on in the world because I can be coming home from like a 12-hour shift with back-to-back -back patients all day and to come home and cosplay and know that I can use that cosplay to further um, help children out at the hospital and bring smile to their faces is so rewarding to me and knowing that eventually the work that I put into my costume now is going to affect kids in the future is something that I think is really cool. And also, I, I think um, people should, people that do cosplay and want to give back should look into any way 
sorry, <clears throat> any way that they can help the hospitals right now or give back is important. Thank you. So, t so Tony, uh, let me have you chime in, sir. Please go ahead. Well, the uh, last thing I would probably say is that uh, this is work that most of you guys are already doing already. So um, there's not much that you have to do. You have the costume, come on out, and just your presence is enough to make the, the kids and families, all the staff very happy. So I would encourage all of you guys to consider um, in doing some type of pediatric service at some point. Thank you. Terrence, you, sir. Uh, let's see. Well, um, I guess I can say that I look forward to the next time we can all gather together and bring some joy uh, using this hobby. Um, it is very rewarding, like Hannah said, but also I think that the world needs something like this, you know, to distract them as well, as much as it distracts me. Um, and again, thank you for having me here today. It's been my pleasure. Luke, sir, you. Uh, yeah, I wanna echo what Terrence just said about the world needs some of this and also what Tony was talking about a little bit before about parents. This affects the parents just as much as does the kids because they get to see their kid all joyful from you know what you guys are doing. And that means just as much to them as it does to the child. Um, so what you guys are doing does make a difference. And I just want to say, I know it is a little bit strange with the virtual component because it's something that's never been done. It's a little awkward, I know, as someone who does it every single day, but it does make a difference and it does matter um, because I've seen what it does when the kid watches these kinds of things. Um, so the work you're doing is great and I'm very happy to be a part of this right now and thank you. You're most welcome. Amber. Yeah, I just want to echo what everyone else is saying um, and that it not only, you know, elevates everyone's mood when somebody comes in and, you know, is there visiting with our patients, but um, it changes our whole day, like five minutes, um, you know, a nurse or anybody can be having a hard time and just even a costume character, anyone coming in can make a difference in their day and their mood. Um, and like Luke was mentioning, a parent if you see your kid is happy, then you're going to be happy. So um, we appreciate everyone coming in and taking their time out of their day and doing this. And just, I mean, we love it. So keep coming. Well, thank you. So um, I would like to thank all of our speakers. I would like to thank um, Amber, uh, the Child Life Special Programmers Coordinator for Chalk Children. I'd like to thank Luke, the Media Programs Coordinator for Chalk Children's. Um, Tony, um, an Avengers Initiative member and pediatrician, we thank you for definitely chiming in. Uh, Terrence, again, we are grateful for your service as a surgical scrub nurse and your time as an Avengers Initiative member. And Hana, um, we're great to see that uh, your family has brought us in contact with Chalk, that you have uh, definitely learned and uh, you want to emulate your father and serve in these times. Um, this uh, host, this panel was brought to you by the Avengers Initiative. Please check out our website along with our social media channels on Facebook and on Instagram. For more about Chalk, please check out their website along with their Facebook page and Instagram. For this time, um, I want to thank you. Uh, for those of you who have come to check out um, cosplay and service to others, please take care and um, Hopefully we all see each other when conventions are safe. Thank you. <laughs>